Quite often in electronics, it's necessary to connect one circuit to another circuit. This happens a lot with amplifiers. For example, if you have a source that can't give you a lot of power, we might need to feed that source into an amplifier, and then have the amplifier give us a signal that we can use to drive a load. Each of these stages of a circuit can be characterized by its input and output impedance. Let me give you an example. By impedance, we typically mean resistance. The two examples are a Thevenin equivalent source and load and a Norton equivalent source and load. I want to illustrate an important difference between current sources and voltage sources when it comes to input and output impedance. First of all, let's define what we mean when we say input and output impedance. Let's divide this circuit into a left half and a right half. We'll call the left half the source, and we'll call the right half the load. Now, these are very simple circuits, but these really could be anything. Remember, we can take any circuit that contains linear circuit elements and represent it by a Thevenin equivalent source. We can take any load and represent it by a single resistor. Output impedance or output resistance is defined as the resistance looking back to the previous circuit stage. The output impedance of this particular circuit fragment is just Rs. The input impedance is defined as the resistance looking in to the next stage. The input impedance for this really simple circuit is just our load resistance. Let's go ahead and apply the same procedure for our Norton equivalent source and load. Our output impedance is the resistance looking back into the previous stage. Our input impedance is the resistance looking forward into the next stage. For this very simple circuit, the output impedance of the source is simply Rs. For this very simple circuit, the input impedance to the load is just the load resistor, R sub L. Let's now go ahead and connect the source to the load. You might recall that if we want to transfer maximum power from the source to the load, this can be achieved if the load resistance equals the source resistance. Because the Thevenin equivalent source and the Norton equivalent source are equal to one another, the same thing is going to hold true for our Norton source as well. What I would like to concentrate in this video on, however, is the matter of the efficiency. Is it more efficient to have a high load resistance or is it more efficient to have a small load resistance? You might recall that efficiency can be defined as power delivered to the load divided by power supplied by the source. If we call this current I, then the power delivered to the load is just I squared times my load resistance. The power supplied by the source is just I squared times the net resistance in this circuit. If we want this circuit to operate at a high efficiency, we can see from the form of this equation right here that it's advantageous to have a large load resistor and a small source resistor. This corresponds to desiring a high input impedance and a small output impedance. When you connect circuits to one another, or when you have a source and you're connecting it to an amplifier, it's often advantageous to require that amplifier to have a high input impedance and it's advantageous for a source to have a small output impedance. Let's take a look at the efficiency with the Norton type of circuit. Efficiency is again defined as power delivered to the load divided by power supplied by the source. In this case, the power delivered to the load is V squared divided by R sub L. The power supplied by the source is V squared divided by these two resistors in parallel with one another. Let's convert this division into a multiplication, and we notice that the voltages cancel. We now have a formula for efficiency, but you might notice that there's a key difference in our new formula for efficiency. The numerator here has the source resistance in it, whereas the numerator over here had the load resistance in it. What this means is that when you're dealing with current sources rather than voltage sources, we typically want to have a small load resistance and a large source resistance. It's the opposite of the case with a voltage source. Usually, when making electrical circuits, we tend to model everything as voltage sources, and we tend to work with voltage sources. So it's a lot more common to desire a high input impedance than it is to desire a low input impedance. We don't normally work with current sources, but this is an important distinction to remember when you're designing circuits. When you're working with voltage sources, it's important to remember that you want to have small output impedances and large input impedances. But when you're working with current sources, 
it's better to have large output impedances and small input impedances. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you might be interested in following our playlist and learning more about the fundamentals of electrical circuits.